Hello there, bro stuff with Prophecy Insights. And I want to talk about <clears throat> the embassy move. And, uh, you know, what did that mean? In the world of prophecy, what did that embassy move point to? Did it mean anything at all? Was it foretold in Bible prophecy that that event would happen? So what's the meaning of it? <clears throat> well, hi, Fred. Well, the first of all, let's be really clear that in Bible prophecy, you can read Bible prophecy from Genesis to Revelation. Nowhere in Bible prophecy is the moving of the United States Embassy to Jerusalem a predicted event. Bible doesn't even address it, doesn't even talk about it. So why is there so much excitement over that? Well, few reasons. Number one, uh, you go back 40, 50 years and every president uh, promised that they would move the embassy uh, from Tel Aviv over to Jerusalem, thereby recognizing that Jerusalem is the capital of the Israeli nation. And notice, I don't say the Israeli state. I call it what it is, the Israeli nation. It's more than a state. It's a country. And every country has a right to name their own capital. So the fact that the embassy got moved and it was President Trump that had the chutzpah, that's a Yiddish word for nerve, courage to do it, that's just an amazing thing. I mean, he made good on a promise. Hi, Dorothy, welcome. He made good on a promise uh, campaign promise. He said, look, hey, I was, he was going to do it and he did it. And, uh, and that's a good thing. It's a good thing for the United States to recognize the capital of its greatest ally in that region, which is Israel, that Jerusalem is their capital. It's just a terrific thing to have done. And then what, what's happening is other countries are following suit and uh, Jerusalem um, is going to be now the capital of all these embassies. So, you know, the United States leads and the others follow suit. And that's just the way it is. And so that's a great thing. All right. But what about Bible prophecy? What, what does it mean? to us right now, what, how is the Lord using this event geopolitically to help set the stage for other things that are going to transpire? Hey there, Steve Hall. Welcome, Steve. Um, okay, so I start off by saying that nowhere in Bible prophecy is the American embassy going from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem mentioned. It's not even talked about. There's Linda Lee. Welcome, Linda. All my old Facebook friends are chiming in today. Good to have all of you. And there's Shane. Hey, welcome, Shane. And look, here's, here's how I see it, okay? Here's how I see it. And I've been studying this, this stuff you know, Bible prophecy and Israel, Jerusalem since 1987. So, I mean, I, I've been watching all of this for a long time. Here's how I see it. Zechariah 12, chapter 12. Uh, waving to Shane. Shane said hello to me. Hey there. Hi, Shane. Zechariah chapter 12 states that uh, Jerusalem will become the focus of the world, that um, all who try to lift it will be cut into pieces. 
and uh, then you flip over two chapters, you go to Zechariah chapter 14, and you see the Lord Jesus coming out of the heavens, the Jewish Messiah, comes out of the heavens, his feet touch the Mount of Olives, it cleaves or divides into two, and that valley is called the Valley of God, the new valley that Jesus creates. Just by his toe, <laughs> touching the Mount of Olives, boom! And they call that, he calls it, names it the Valley of God, and the remnant of Jews that, that are alive uh, after the great tribulation or the wrath of God that falls on the world, the remnant of Jews go into the valley of God where they're protected and they're safe. Okay. The fact that the United States moved its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem refocuses the world's attention on Jerusalem and then the other countries that are following suit, it, Jerusalem's going to be in the news for a very long time. So that's why this is so exciting. That, one, the United States put its support squarely and firmly behind uh, Israel. And that is going to make God very happy that we've done that. And all the other countries are going to bring their embassies over. And so the focus of the world will continue to stay on Jerusalem, just like Zechariah chapters 12 and 14 suggest. Uh, Daniel chapter 9, same thing. So, what, so here's what's going on now. Just a quick update. My sources told me today, this is kind of amazing, that... Turkey has called for a meeting between Turkey, Sudan, Russia, uh, and other Arab nations. A special meeting over this whole issue of Israel protecting themselves and bombing the Iranian bases in Syria and over the embassies being moved to Jerusalem and Jerusalem be, being declared the capital of Israel. Turkey wants a meeting. Now go to Ezekiel 38 and look up the countries in Ezekiel 38. Surprise, the very countries that Turkey has sent out invitations to to get together to talk, Iran being one of them as well. Those countries are in Ezekiel 38. So we now have the proof and the evidence in our day and time that God is definitely setting the stage for the Ezekiel 38 war campaign that he, God, is going to fight. Uh, Israel's enemies and defeat them soundly and humiliate them and drive them out of, off of the mountains of Israel. So that's what all of this is all about. The, the embassy being moved, all the other nations following suit, uh, is all bringing about the Zechariah 12, 14 issues, the Ezekiel 38 issues, Daniel chapter 9, because now that our embassy's in Jerusalem and all the other embassies are going to be in Jerusalem, what do you think is going to be the next thing on the list? What do you think? Just, I, just guess. Take a wild guess. What do you think the Jews are in Israel are talking about right this very minute and planning? Uh, yeah, I heard you right. You got it. Ding, ding, ding. 100% correct. You're right. I know what you're thinking. The rebuilding of the third temple. Yes, they are talking about it, planning for it, and they want it to happen now. They believe now is the time. So, you see, this is how God uses geopolitical events to shape and form his prophetic vision 
and then to carry it out. And so one thing, it's like dominoes. You tip one domino in the Middle East and the, and the others all start to fall into place. And that's what's happening. God has tipped the right dominoes and the right geopolitical events. And now all these prophecies are getting ready to be fulfilled. And we also have the Isaiah 17 prophecy uh, that has to be fulfilled that could be fulfilled. I mean, you could wake, go to bed tonight, and wake up, and find out Isaiah 17 has happened, and that is the complete and utter destruction of Damascus. Why? Because Israel has stated, Bibi Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, had an interview with Janine Pirro on Fox News, you know, Judge Janine. And he told her flat out, we are going to go after Iran and our enemies while we are strong. And we are going to go after them in their lands. We're not going to let them come here to Israel. So um, the Iranian missile depots that are in Syria, Damascus, Syria, if I were a resident of Damascus, I would get out and I'd get out now because Israel's going to bomb them and wipe them all out. Now, how severe that bombing ends up being and what damage it ends up doing, only the Lord knows. But we have the prophecy that Damascus would be utterly destroyed and that has never seen its fulfillment yet. So, this is what's going on. Hey, there's Julie. Hey, Julie. Um, this is what's going on right now. It's very, very interesting times. I mean, like I said, I've been studying prophecy now since 1987, and never have I seen the events shaping up and coming together so rapidly as I do right now. So ultimately, what does it all mean, and what does it point to? It all means that the return of Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior, his return is on the near horizon. Not setting any dates, can't possibly tell you when that's going to happen. That's in God's authority to, to know about. That's not my business. Uh, none of my business. That's God's business. But Based on the events that are taking place, we can look down a timeline a little bit into the future and know that if things keep going the way they are, and I don't see why they are going to stop at this point, then we are going to see the return of Christ sooner rather than later. Now, some Christians believe... Um, I'm, I'm just reading something that uh, Shane said. Uh, every time Israel defends itself, they are harshly criticized and even made into being. Yeah, that's true. Very true, Shane. Um, yeah, it's like, here's what BB said. Hey, to J Judge Janine, he said, look, if one of your neighbors, like Mexico, was going to attack you, and started lobbing bombs into San Diego. Would you just sit back and do nothing? Of course not. You would destroy the missile silos that the bombs were coming from. And that's what Israel, that's what we do, Israel. Um, it's a crazy upside down world, isn't it? Where Israel is criticized for defending her right to exist her right to protect her citizens, her right to peace and to live a life of peace and, and, and tranquility, not to be badgered and bothered all the time. Well, here's the news flash, my friends. Here's the news flash. Until the Prince of Peace, Jesus, comes, 
and sets up his kingdom in this world, headquartered in Jerusalem, there will be no peace. And this is going to continue and it's going to get worse and worse and worse until the Lord finally says enough and he comes. Now, why hasn't the rapture happened yet? Here's why. Because God loves his creation. He loves human beings who he created. And he wants as many to be saved as possible. So the Lord tarries. The Lord is patient. He's gracious. He's kind. He's a loving, gracious God who wants everybody who is willing to come to the saving knowledge that Jesus, Yeshua, is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Savior of the world. So that's why the rapture hasn't come yet. That's why God has pushed the pause button on events, well, since 1948 he's done it. Because he wants people to come to Christ. That's why... And the Lord knows once he hits the go button and things start really getting faster and faster and things start wrapping up and coming together, he knows that there are a lot of people that aren't going to be able to come to Christ or it's going to be really difficult for them. Look, the, the people in the tribulation who accept Christ are going to have to die for their testimony. And... They're probably, they're, they're going to be tortured. They're, they're, their heads are going to be cut off. It's going to be horrible. So the Lord doesn't want to push it in that direction so fast yet. He, he wants people to be saved and be part of the bride of Christ. So when the rapture comes, they'll go up with all of us. The dead will go up first. And we who are alive and remain will follow. But the Lord just wants a... If, God, if it were possible, the Lord wants the whole world saved. But the Lord knows that's not going to happen. Because you're going to have people that just refuse. But in the meantime, uh, the rapture hasn't happened because God wants there to be a huge harvest and he wants to increase the bride of Christ before that wedding day takes place. So just thought I'd throw that in. I mean, that's why. That's why we're still here. Um, so pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for your neighbors and your loved ones, family, friends that don't know the Lord. Pray that they come to the saving knowledge of Christ. And if you don't, if you don't know the Lord, you, I'm talking to you right there. You, I see you out there. If you don't know the Lord, go to brostuff.com. Scroll down that page halfway. It says how to ask Christ into your life. Few, two little videos and, and a little message from Dr. David Jeremiah. Great brother in Christ. Read up on that. It'll take you, you know, it, it'll take you six to ten minutes. Read up on that and then ask Christ into your life. That's what you got to do. Who knows? Maybe you're the holdout. Maybe the Lord's waiting for you. And you'll say yes to Christ and the rapture of the church will come. I mean, who knows? When the number of the Gentiles come in and we hit that number, only God knows what it is. When we hit it, the Lord's going to say, that's it. Go get him. The Father's going to say, Jesus, go get him. And he's going to step out into the clouds. The heavenly shofar is going to sound. That's kind of what it sounds like. And that's going to sound. We're going to look up and be gone. Just like that. So ask Christ into your life. Best thing you could ever do. I pray you do it today. This is Burl Steph over and out.
I hope you enjoyed this prophecy update. Share it with people. Remember, if you're on Facebook, like it. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Okay? See you later. Bye for now.